Hey everyone, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. I welcome you all in this video. As you know, the questions that I discuss in the videos are useful for your RDS FE NAVAD and banking PO examinations. So let's begin this video. But before that, you have to subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you can get updated about the new uploads on our channel. This is the Telegram group which you can join if you want to enjoy the free quizzes as well as get the latest updates about the examination. This is the new course for RBI Gateway 2022. Here we provide you with videos, PDFs and mocks. Along with this, you will get mock interviews as well so that you can be prepared for your final interviews. And guys, this is the book kit that you will get if you enroll in this course. And these are the books that you will be getting at your doorstep if you enroll in this new course. And right now we are running a 30% discount on this course which you can avail by using RBI 30 coupon code. And this is the number which you can dial if you have any query related to the course or related to the examination. So here, this is the session guys on G7 Summit. So you must have heard about the G7 Summit. And in this session, I have come up with the entire details about the G7 as well as the important announcements made during the G7 Summit. And also we will be looking at the probable questions that can be framed out of those announcements. So the very first fact, the very first uh, introduction here is about the latest updates related to the G7 Summit. For example, dates, venue, theme, edition. So let's look at them in detail. So the first thing here is the date, which is not at all relevant for you guys for your examination. This is just an informative uh, gesture from my side. This is the venue. This is very important. Curtis Bay Resort in Curtis Bay Village, Cornwall, Southwest England. So this is, you can see the exact address where G7 Summit took place and you are required to learn it as it is. Then this was the 47th edition of G7, uh, G7 Summit. Remember, editions are always important for the important summits. Next is theme. Again, a very important part of this G7 Summit. So the theme was Build Back Better. Then this year's G7 Summit was, presi the president of this year's G7 Summit was United Kingdom. Then the members of G7 are Canada, US, UK, France, Germany, Italy and Japan. Guests were India, Australia, Republic of Korea and South Africa. So Prime Minister Narendra Modi virtually attended this G7 Summit 2021. And this is the sixth time for UK to host this summit. Guys, if you remember in the year 2019 in RBI Grand paper, there was a question on Tokyo Olympics. How many times Japan has hosted the Olympics? There was a question uh, in your RBI Grand Therefore, you should remember this thing as well, the number of times the country has hosted that summit or that Olympic. Because Olympic is a very major event in the field of sports. Therefore, it was asked in your RBI Grand examination. Similarly, G7 summit is also very important particularly because of the announcements that have been made by G7 summit leaders. Okay, so now let us look at the question that can be framed out of this basic information. What is the venue of G7 summit 2021? A very basic question that has been asked from you, but the options are quite difficult I would say. Curtis Bay, Montebello, Halifax, Williamsburg, Denver. So these are all the places you have to tell the exact place. The right answer here is option A, Curtis Bay. We have already discussed that. Okay. So here comes our first highlight of this G7 summit. What did the PM Modi say in that summit? The first and the foremost thing here is the One Earth, One Health mantra that was given by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. You must have heard about this a lot in the news as well. Now what does this one uh, Earth One Health Mantra stand for the basic meaning is to highlight the collaborative approach. So he says that uh, the whole of society approach is important to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. Wherein he cited the example of India. For example, in India, India used the digital technology in order to fight the COVID-19 better. And according to him, India has succeeded in fighting the COVID-19 pandemic in terms of collaborative approach, by using the collaborative approach, by bringing together the government, the public sector, the private sector and the general public. So that was the example, that was the basic agenda behind this One Earth, One Health mantra. Basically to call for global solidarity to fight this COVID-19 better. That is whole, the whole purpose of this mantra. 
the second thing here of importance is that he referred to the special responsibility of the democratic and transparent societies to prevent future pandemic so you can say that it is the euphemistic way to spotlight china on the spread of covid-19 pandemic but in general terms if you ignore the politics in general terms he is saying that it is the special responsibility of the democratic and transparent societies to prevent the for future pandemics by declaring the uh, arrival of those pandemics and taking early measures to prevent them from becoming the global pandemics so that was his motive behind this statement now this is the second time pm modi has been invited to the g7 summit in 2019 he had uh, he had been invited as the goodwill partner by france so this is the second time this is again important it can be asked from him the next point here is that he emphasize to keep the supply chains for vaccine raw material open so that the vaccine production can be boosted so he uh, emphasized on the g7 countries to open the supply chains for covid-19 raw materials vaccine raw material so that the vaccine can be uh, developed rapidly the next point here is that pm modi uh, sought the support of g7 countries in its proposal for giving of trips agreement on covid-19 vaccine first thing that you should remember here is that this proposal was made at wto along with south africa and what is this trips agreement this trips agreement has been elaborated in a detailed manner in the next question but first let's let us see what kind of question can be framed out of this information about the prime minister narendra modi's visit at the summit remember that the visit was virtual not in person and this was the first time that g7 summit was held in person after the covid-19 pandemic has struck the entire globe okay but prime minister has attend, uh, attended this uh, summit virtually okay so the question is how many times has prime minister narendra modi been invited to the g7 summit so we have 5 3 1 2 and 4 in the options you must have known the answer of this question by now it is the two times the option b is the right answer two times Uh, prime minister narendra modi has been invited to the g7 summit remember the first time when he was invited france was holding the presidency the second time uk was holding the presidency the year was 2019 and this time it is 2021 so here comes our third announcement or third highlight of the g7 summit if you remember just a few minutes back we discussed that india and south africa both have uh, proposed made this proposal at the wto to waive off the intellectual property rights agreement that is trips agreement on vaccines and drugs now what is this trips agreement that we are going to discuss in detail but remember how is it related to the g7 summit because indian pm has sought support from the g7 countries to uh, to support its proposal at the wto now what is this trips agreement all about first of all in in a very brief manner if i would to summarize this trips agreement then i would say that this is basically a, an agreement to protect the intellectual property rights of the member countries of wto okay so intellectual property right if you see the full form agreement on trade related aspects of intellectual property rights so the first fact that we have come across is that it protects the intellectual property rights of the member countries and it came into effect in 1995 along with the, the wto when the wto was established in the 1995 this agreement came into effect in terms of vaccine how is it related to the vaccine this is basically intellectual property right is what intellectual property right is the idea is the technology or the knowledge that is your intellectual property so in terms of vaccine it relates to the sharing of knowledge or sharing of technology or the know how as we say it the know how of producing the vaccine because many of the countries are struggling to produce vaccine because they do not have that technology they do not have that knowledge how to create the vaccine therefore only a bunch of companies have succeeded in creating the globally uh, successful vaccines therefore in terms of vaccine it relates to the sharing of technology and knowledge related to vaccine production and india and south africa are the developing countries that are seeking this uh, waiver of trips agreement so that the vaccine technology can be shared among the member countries of wto i also remember this thing us has also supported this proposal of india and south africa because the reason behind this is that a bunch of uh, mncs have secured this right have secured the right of producing the global uh, vaccines and they are selling it to the 
most developed countries only. So the countries where they have a lion's share, they have a big market, they are selling the majority of the vaccines there. And in order to ensure the equitable and the widespread access of the global uh, coronavirus vaccine, the strips waiver is needed at this moment. Now, the next point here is, in 2001, Doha Declaration on Trips Agreement in Public Health was adopted and this was a remarkable amendment to the TRIPS agreement because this allowed the uh, member countries to share the technical aspects to provide the license of manufacturing the vaccines to the underdeveloped or the developing countries in the times of pandemics or in the times of global epidemics. So let us read what this uh, statement says. In 2001, Doha Declaration on the TRIPS Agreement and Public Health clarified that the TRIPS agreement can and should be interpreted and implemented in a manner supportive of WTO members' rights to protect public health and in particular to promote access to medicines for all. In short, this declaration paved the way for waiving of TRIPS provisions for the sake of public health to ensure better accessibility to the essential medicines. This amendment was legalized in 2005 and it came into force in 2017. So I hope that this is clear to you. Coronavirus pandemic is the situation which is taking the lives of many people. It is the emergency, public health emergency. And in order to promote the access of vaccines, there is a provision that was provided by this Doha Declaration on the TRIPS Agreement for widespread uh, distribution of coronavirus vaccine or the vaccine in general. The next point here is that this provides the legal basis for WTO members to grant special compulsory license exclusive to the uh, exclusive for the production and export of affordable medicines to the other members that cannot dom domestically produce the needed medicine in sufficient quantities for their patients. So here we can say the countries which are unable to uh, create or produce the vaccines, they will get the support from the developed countries or the countries that have already developed the medicine in developing the medicine. In 2005, India came into com compliance of this agreement. The next point here is very important that is Murkish Declaration of 1995 signed in Murkish Morocco established World Trade Organization. TRIPS agreement is mentioned in the Annex 1C of this declaration. So here it was the very basic fact related to this TRIPS agreement but I hope it is very important and you can remember. Now let us see what kind of question has been asked from the TRIPS agreement. Which of the following statement is not true about the TRIPS agreement? TRIPS is an international legal agreement between all the member nations of the w uh, World Trade Organization. TRIPS stands for Agreement on Trade Related Aspects of Intellectual Property Rights. TRIPS came into being along with WTO in 1997. In 2001, Doha Declaration on TRIPS Agreement and Public Health was adopted. In 2005, India came into compliance of TRIPS agreement. So which one? is the wrong statement here. The wrong statement is option C. TRIPS came into being along with the WTO in 1995 and not 1997. And remember that in 2001 this was adopted but in 2005 it was legalized and in 2017 it was implemented by majority of the members of WTO. Okay, so that is the distinction between this 2001, 2005 and 2017. So I hope that this much is clear to you. Here comes our next highlight of G7 summit, that is Curbis Bay Declaration. Now this Curbis Bay Declaration in just a simple line is a declaration to prevent zoonotic diseases as well as global pandemics in the future. Now what does it has in detail? Now let us discuss now. So G7 leaders signed the Curbis Bay Declaration to prevent future pandemics. All the G7 members will be bound to use their resources for preventing any future uh, pandemics. So this, these are the basic statements. There is no effort from your side to mug up these statements. The next point here is very important that UK will establish a center to develop vaccines for prevention of zoonotic diseases which spread from animals to humans like coronavirus. The next is 100 days mission to respond to future pandemic threats is the action plan for diagnosing and responding to the future pandemics within 100 days. This mission contains recommendations on how to take action for preventing uh, the global pandemics in the future. So here that was all about the Curtis uh, Bay Declaration. Now let us look at the priorities set up in this summit. 
So the priority highlighted during the summit are global recovery from coronavirus, strengthening the resilience against the pandemics concurrently, future prosperity through free and fair trade, tackling climate change, biodiversity conservation, and promoting shared values and open societies. So these are the uh, priorities highlighted in the summit. Now let us look at the question. Which country will establish a center to develop vaccines for prevention of zoonotic diseases spreading from animals to humans under the Cadiz Bay Declaration? So here the answer is option C. UK has announced to develop this center. Okay, so here comes our next point. G7 Global Infrastructure Plan. Again, very important. Listen to me very carefully. First of all, this plan has been named as Build Back Better World Initiative. Which is also the theme, Build Back Matter is the theme of G7 2021. Build Back Better World Initiative. So, this is the G7 Global Infrastructure Plan in order to counter the China's Belt and Road Initiative. So, what is this Belt and Road Initiative of China? First of all, there are two parts that you can remember about this Belt and Road Initiative. First is that it was launched in 2013, this was a basic fact. Second is the functioning or the purpose of this Belt and Road Initiative. So, first uh, thing that you should know about this is that through this Belt and Road Initiative, China is developing the infrastructure in least and low de uh, uh, developing countries by giving them loans. But these loans turn out to be the dead trap for these countries. Therefore, in order to pr protect these least developed and low uh, and middle income countries from falling into the dead trap of China, the G7 countries has launched this global infrastructure plan. Now, under this Global Infrastructure Plan or Build That Better World Initiative, the G7 countries will provide a transparent infrastructure partnership to, pro to help reduce the loan of these developing countries by 40 trillion US dollar, 40 trillion by 2035. So, this is basically a vision of this G7 Global Infrastructure Plan that is to narrow the loan burden of the developing countries by 40 dollars US dollars. Now, under this uh, initiative, the G7 and its allies will mobilize private sector capital towards developing countries to develop infrastructure in areas such as climate, health and health security, digital technology and gender equality, equity and equality. So, these are the areas where the private sector capital will be put in by the G7 and its allies. The modus operandi and the financial uh, allocation of this mission has not been revealed yet. There, uh, these are the things that are yet to be worked upon. So that was all about this G7 Global Infrastructure Plan. Now let us look at the probable question. How much debt of developing countries will be reduced by the Build Back Better World Initiative? So here the answer is 40 trillion. This is the vision guys. This is not the accurate uh, goal that has been set by the G7 countries. It is just the vision that they are going to reduce the debt burden by 40 trillion dollars. So here, this is the last portion of our session and about the G7, that is the history of G7. So it was established in 1975 as G6, where Canada was not a part of this grouping. And the purpose was to lead the industrialized democracies to discuss the global economy. As you would know, all the members of G7 are already developed countries. So they are the leading industrial economies that are focusing on the global economy, the, how to drive the global economy into their benefit or towards the global benefit. That is something that depends upon their intention. But as far as the intention on paper goes on, this is the intention that they have mentioned to lead, uh, lead the industrialized, uh, to lead basically to discuss the benefits for the global economy. Now later it has expanded its scope to peace and security, climate change and also covers the coronavirus pandemic. Canada joined this G6 in 1976 to make it G7. Then Russia joined the G7 in 1998 and uh, the group was named, renamed to G8. But in 2014, Russia was kicked out of this group in because of its annexation of Ukraine's Crimea Peninsula. The first summit of G7 was hosted by France and the latest, that is the 47th summit, was hosted by UK. Which country hosted the first summit of G7? So it was hosted by France. So that was all about this session, about the G7 summit. I hope that you have enjoyed the session and learned something during the session. If you have, then do not forget to subscribe and give us a like. Thank you so much for watching the session.